Are most of the kids in favor of the picketing? Yep. How come? Um, I think they should get a better education too, cause um, and I think they should get some more money, cause they work be working extra hours for us. Hello, lifers. A few weeks ago, we featured a video on Cat Williams, who was greatly influenced by the life of Prince. In today's video, we are diving into the legendary musician and artist Prince Roger Nelson's ancestry, family tree, and religious background. This one is going to be a lot of fun. Of course, I grew up as a fan of Prince. My parents introduced me to his music. Having grown up in the 80s, I thought I knew everything there was to know about Prince. Apparently, I was wrong though because I learned some surprising things about his family background and ancestry. Whether you think there isn't anything you can possibly learn about Prince, or if perhaps you've been living under a rock and don't know who he is, this video is for everyone. I mean, come on, it's Prince. His music is like fine wine. It never gets old. And of course, he comes from a super interesting family background. While you're watching the video, make sure to drop the name of your favorite Prince song in the comments. But before we get started, guys, I took a My Heritage DNA test. If you've been following for a while, you know we've been on a journey to understand more about our family heritage. We have redheads in the family and we wanted to know which countries we might have inherited that family trait. I can't wait to see my DNA results from My Heritage. My Heritage is really easy to use. Everything you need comes in a convenient box. The test comes with two swabs that you will use for each cheek. You'll want to swab each cheek for 30 to 60 seconds and follow the easy directions to package it. The My Heritage DNA test helps you discover your origins and helps you discover new relatives. My Heritage covers more regions than any other test and I can hardly wait for my results. The My Heritage Ethnicity Estimate provides a percentage breakdown of your origins across 42 supported ethnicities and 2,114 geographic regions. So it's going to be so interesting to see all the geographic regions I match. If you are as curious about your background as I was about mine, you want to get this My Heritage DNA test. It's affordable, it's easy to use, and it comes with a wealth of information. It also helps you to know more about your identity. So come on, join this journey with me. You can buy a My Heritage DNA kit by clicking on the link in the description box of this video. Make sure to use the coupon code TRISH for free shipping. As an added bonus, you can start a 30-day free trial of My Heritage's best subscription for family history research. Don't forget to also check out the features they have on their website, such as the Family Tree Tool and their Photo Features Tool that enhances, colorizes, and animates old family photos. Okay, guys, so it's been several weeks, and I'm super excited because I just got the email notification that my results are in. I can't wait to check them, okay? I haven't seen them yet, and I'm going to hit play. You're going to see it on the screen the same time that I do, and I'm really excited to see, you know, if what I thought is actually going to be what is revealed on this screen. So let's take a look. Nigerian! Hey, 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 hey. Okay, so I really knew about the Nigerian already. So I'm glad to see that there because I'm aware of that. And I'm aware of the West African. Now, what? Kenyan? Okay, that's surprising to me because I was always told about the West African. But Kenya? That's on the east side of Africa and okay so I'm not I'm not surprised about the Irish Scottish and Welsh ancestry because that's right in line with what I understand about my ancestry but Kenya that's really surprising to me and then the 18.5% of 
six more ethnicities. That's a pretty large percentage of others. So I want to click on that to see what that may be. Y'all, it's saying that I am 2.8%, 2.8% Maasai. Okay, so I watch Maasai videos on YouTube <laughs> and I think the culture is really fascinating. So I've been watching that. That's really surprising. And North Africa, I never heard of that either. Oh my gosh, you guys. Now this, I really am super surprised about. Japanese and Korean? <laughs> what I really thought I knew, I guess I don't know as much as I thought. Don't forget to click on the link in the description box to order a MyHeritage DNA kit and make sure to use the coupon code TRISH for free shipping. Remember, as an added bonus, you get a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription for family history research. Thank you, MyHeritage, for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to Prince. Legendary musician, singer, songwriter, and musical innovator Prince was born Prince Rogers Nelson on June 7, 1958 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His father, John Nelson, was a musician who used the stage name Prince Rogers. Prince's mother, Maddie Shaw, was a jazz singer who performed with the Prince Rogers Band. His father was 41 at the time of Prince's birth and his mother was 24. Prince comes from a troubled family background. His parents divorced when he was 10 years old and he and his sister went back and forth between their parents' homes. Prince eventually ran away from home to live with a neighbor's family. Some people allege that Prince's father actually put him out of the home when he was a young teen. Similar to the Cat Williams story, if you haven't checked that out, make sure you watch this video first and then run over and check that video out as well. In addition to a troubled family background, Prince had some health issues from an early age and suffered from epileptic seizures. We previously released a video on the singer Rihanna's family background and discovered she too had a troubled family background and suffered from health issues from an early age. In her case, she suffered from debilitating headaches, which seemed to disappear once her parents divorced and her father left the home. According to the CDC, intensive and prolonged stress can lead to a variety of short and long-term negative health effects. It can disrupt early brain development and compromise functioning of the nervous and immune systems. In addition, childhood stress can lead to health problems later in life, including alcoholism, depression, eating disorders, heart disease, cancer, and other chronic diseases. High levels of stress hormones, including cortisol, can suppress the body's immune response. This can leave an individual vulnerable to a variety of infections and chronic health problems. Witnessing intimate partner violence as a child can have a major impact on health and behavior. While the cause of Prince's childhood seizures has not been directly attributed to his dysfunctional family life, it may have had an impact on his health problems as a child and his drug and alcohol issues later on in life. Prince was also bullied as a child and was teased in school, which led him to being as flashy and noisy as possible as a form of coping mechanism. Prince was raised as a Seventh-day Adventist. He converted to a Jehovah's Witness in 2001 through the mentorship of bassist Larry Graham. According to Prince's biographer, Torre, Prince had a deep fascination with the afterlife and Judeo-Christian scripture, which he constantly quoted. According to The Guardian in 2004, a newspaper in his hometown reported how a married couple had answered their door to find Prince proffering a copy of The Watchtower, an illustrated religious publication that is often passed out by Jehovah's Witnesses while evangelizing. Though the couple were Orthodox Jews and it was Yom Kippur, they were also Prince fans. They welcomed him into the house. In an interview with Tavis Smiley in 2009, Prince said he did not vote for President Obama because Prince was one of the Jehovah's Witnesses. 
In our last video discussing Cat Williams, who grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, we shared that Jehovah's Witnesses do not participate in political elections. Prince's view on God and religion were evident throughout his life and even were discussed in his songs. Prince's song, Dear Mr. Man, quotes Christ's Sermon on the Mount, and the song, I Would Die For You, has many Christian themes. Alexandra Rosen's writing for Reuters quoted Prince as saying, Everything I do is inspired by God. Considering the influence religion had on Prince, his family, and his creativity, before diving into Prince's ancestry and family tree, let's take a look at what helped to form these views, the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The founders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church came from the pews of the Protestant Church in the early to mid-1800s. The Second Great Awakening, a Protestant religious revival during the early 19th century in the United States, launched new religious movements such as Adventism. These movements led to more people studying Bible scriptures on their own rather than relying on clergy. Tent meetings and Bible studies began to arise. In the 1830s, a devout Baptist named William Miller led Bible studies with a focus on studying prophecy in the biblical books of Daniel and Revelations. He eventually concluded Christ's second coming would be a literal event rather than a figurative or spiritual event, which had been the popular reasoning at the time. He believed the 2300-day prophecy in Daniel chapters 8 and 9 predicted exactly when the second coming of Jesus Christ would be, and Miller concluded the time would be between 1843 and 1844. His followers eventually narrowed down the date to October 22, 1844. His followers, the Millerites, were devastated when that date passed without the second coming, and that day became known as the Great Disappointment. Many Millerites left the movement. Those who remained launched a series of Bible conferences to study their mistakes. They then came up with a series of what they called Bible Truths, which included Christ's second coming is imminent, will be seen by all the world, and it will be literal, not metaphorical. The seventh day, Saturday, is God's Sabbath. The fourth commandment's instruction to celebrate and keep it remains literal to this day, along with the rest of the Ten Commandments. In the last days of this earth, Christians will be tempted by apostasy, but be called back to divine truth, and a relatively small remnant of faithful believers will answer this call. This remnant would be marked by a recurrence of the prophetic ministry, and many people will display the prophetic gift and proclaim the good news. These new Millerites became Adventists, and the new movement was guided by a young woman named Ellen G. White, who was recognized as a modern recipient of the gift of prophecy. Ellen White's husband, James, assisted with organizing the groups of Adventists across the northern United States in 1860, and the consolidated groups agreed upon the name Seventh-day Adventists. Some critics of the Seventh-day Adventist religion pointed out Adventists are exclusive. They are taught that Sunday keepers are Babylon or the daughters of Babylon. They are taught that Sunday keepers are going to receive the mark of the beast and that the Sabbath is the great separating wall between God's true remnant people and the deceived lost world. Ellen White said this, Satan has taken full possession of the non-Adventist churches, and even their prayers are an abomination to God. The conflict over the Sabbath is the final conflict between good and evil, and it is the separating wall that divides loyal Christians from disloyal Christians. Adventism historically has had a lot of rules, including forbidding the use of cheese, butter, and eggs, forbidding eating of meat, salad dressing should be made without vinegar, coffee and tea are forbidden, card playing, chess, and checkers are banned, 
football, tennis, cricket, baseball, and bike riding are banned. Secular music concerts are not the best use of time. Fictional writings or TV shows should be avoided. Jewelry is forbidden. Considering the SDA restrictions that seem to be in contrast with Prince's lifestyle, it's not surprising that Prince decided to explore other religions. He became a Jehovah's Witness in later life, a religion that came with other restrictive beliefs. If you would like more info on the background of the Jehovah's Witnesses, check out the video on Cat Williams, who had a background in the Jehovah's Witnesses faith as well. Some people believed Prince was biracial. I know growing up I heard the rumor that his father was black and his mother was white or another ethnicity. However, this is not the case. Prince was born in Minnesota, but his family originated from Louisiana. His father, John Nelson, was born in Webster Parish, Louisiana, which is part of the Shreveport metropolitan area. John was one of five children. His parents, Prince's paternal grandparents, were Carrie Jenkins, born in 1883, and Clarence Allen Nelson, born in 1882. His paternal grandparents were also born in Louisiana. Prince's father, John, moved to Minneapolis in 1948 to become a musician, where he met Prince's mother, Maddie Shaw, in 1956. Maddie already had a son, Prince's half-brother, Alfred Frank Alonzo Jackson. Prince's parents married in 1957 and had Prince in 1958 and his little sister Tyka in 1960. His father John had a previous marriage that resulted in two sons and three daughters. Prince's half-siblings on his father's side were Sharon, Noreen, Lorna, John Roger, and Duane. In addition, Prince had one full sibling, Tyka, and two half-brothers on his mother's side, Alfred Jackson and Omar Baker. Omar was born through another relationship after Prince's parents' divorce, and Alfred was born before Prince's parents met. John Nelson's father, Prince's paternal grandfather, Clarence Allen Nelson, had 11 children by two different wives over a 36-year period. Six of Prince's eight great-grandparents were born into slavery. They had ties to Louisiana, Georgia, and Alabama. John Nelson's grandfather, Reverend Edward Ed Nelson, Prince's paternal great-grandfather, was born to a white slave owner, John Nelson, and his Cherokee concubine. Ed was listed as mulatto in the 1880 census, but mulatto was not always exclusive to mean one black parent and one white parent. In Ed's case, he had one white parent and one Native American parent. Ed became a traveling preacher for the Colored Methodist Episcopal Church and married Emma, who was listed as a black 18-year-old woman in the 1880 census. Ed and Emma had 11 children over a period of 14 years. The white slave owner, John Nelson, would be Prince's paternal great-great-grandfather. The Cherokee woman would be Prince's paternal great-great-grandmother. If you are familiar with black American ancestry, then you know some mixed ancestry is common among black Americans especially those who descended from enslaved ancestors. However, black Americans with mixed ancestry more than two generations back are not typically considered mixed by American definitions. In Prince's case, his parents and grandparents were considered black, so Prince is not considered mixed race. It was rumored that Prince came from a Creole background in Louisiana However, research shows this may not be the case as the family migrated to Louisiana from Georgia and Alabama and according to Alex Genealogy on Facebook, no connections could be made to the Nelson family of Iberia Parish, Louisiana. Frank Shaw was Prince's maternal grandfather. Frank was a Pullman porter. Pullman porters were men, usually former slaves, 
hired to work for the railroads as porters on cars where people slept. Their job was to carry passengers baggage, shine shoes, set up and maintain the sleeping berths, and serve passengers. Pullman porters are credited for contributing to the development of the black middle class. Frank was married to Lucille Bonnell, who was born in 1899 in Lincoln Parish, Louisiana, and passed away in 1974 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Lucille was a widow for 11 years after her husband, Frank, died in 1963. Lucille's parents were Sam Walter Bonnell, born in 1877, and Katie Head, born in 1879. Frank's parents were Preston Shaw, born in 1840, and Eliza Britt, born in 1862. It is evident that Prince's ancestors had a great influence on who he became. Prince came from musicians, preachers, servicemen, and family determined to provide a better life for their future generations. Although Prince has no living children, he had one child, baby Amir, who sadly passed away as a baby due to a rare genetic disorder. His legacy continues on in his music, the influence he's had on people's lives worldwide, and his numerous nieces, nephews, and cousins. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. You also can find out more about your own ancestry. Don't forget to click on the link in the description box to order your My Heritage Kit to start your journey of discovery. I will see you next week with another great video.